As a sports better, you're in the business of making predictions. In fact, you put your money where your mouth is in betting your predictions. Well, it's good to know there are some areas of data science that have tools that are specifically designed for making predictions. And we're going to go over a couple of them today on this episode of Making a Modeler. Okay, in previous episodes, we've built a simple model, we've built a web scraper, and then we've calculated and compared the correlation values of the data that we've scraped. In this episode, we're going to get into regression analysis, and then we're going to be making predictions based on the data and the results of the analysis. Uh, first, though, I want to remind you that if you haven't watched the other three episodes of this series, you really should do so before diving into this one. What I'm teaching here are concepts, and it's tough to go into this concept without knowing what we've built on in the past. Uh, plus, if you don't do that, you may get lulled into thinking you can jump right into regression analysis with not understanding the data and techniques that are beneath it. And remember, on the whole, sports betting is a lot of hard work, and you need to put the time into it in order to reap the benefits of it. And remember, if you like this content, please help me out by giving it a thumbs up down below and also consider subscribing. That lets YouTube know that this is worthy content. Now, there are two major types of regression analysis, linear and logistic. Linear regression describes the relationship between a dependent variable and an independent variable. Now, in our example of NBA box scores, the dependent variable would be the points scored by the home team, and while the independent variable would be something like field goals made by the home team. Said a different way that might make this concept easier to remember, the number of points the home team scores is dependent on the number of field goals made by the home team. This of course makes logical sense as well, and we saw that in the correlation analysis we did in the previous episode. Logistic regression is very similar to linear regression, however it gives us the probability of a binary result. Uh, for instance, it could tell us the probability that the score will go over the total based on the number of field goals made by both teams. Now, shortly we're going to dive into linear regression in Excel. However, when it comes time to show you basic logistic regression, we won't be using Excel. You see, we've reached the practical limits of what Excel can do for our purposes. Now, throughout this series, I've been using Excel and Google Sheets because it's the common app that most people are familiar with. There is a far shorter learning curve using Excel and Google Sheets because most of the product is visual. Those of you who might be intimidated by a scripting language like R or Python can grasp the concepts easier in something like Excel. Now, while you can do logistic regression in Excel with some add-ons, it's not very fast and you'll find it cumbersome to work with if you have to do multiple logistic regressions. So we're moving past Excel and onto Orange. Now, more about Orange in a few minutes. Let's first get into linear regression, still in Excel. Okay, welcome back. We are back in Excel here. This is the same uh, spreadsheet that we've been using in other episodes of this series. Uh, I did make a couple of modifications that we're going to actually get into with logistic regression. So uh, if you see some other things on the screen here that you're not familiar with, maybe on the far right hand side of, of this table, just ignore them for now. I'm going to explain them when we get into logistic regression. But for linear regression, it's actually pretty simple in Excel what we're going to be doing. So we're actually going to go to the data tab and we're then going to go to data analysis, which is where we went for the correlation that we did in the previous episode. And we're going to scroll down here to regression, hit OK. And what we got to figure out now is what the values that we need to put in here. So uh, the, we got the Y and the X. Now, as I explained leading into this, the Y is the dependent variable. This is what is dependent uh, upon other things to figure out. So we know that home points are dependent on all of those other stats from the box score. So we're actually going to put in uh, home points into this. Now what I'm actually going to do here is this table is 972 rows long. 
um, in counting that first row of, of header information. But I'm actually going to take just 960 rows. And uh, same with the X's. Now the X's are all the other things from the box score. So uh, it's all the other, we see it here, columns N through V. Uh, and we're going to do the same there. We're just going to take uh, 960 rows. And I'll explain why we're going to do that briefly here in a minute. Uh, but we do have labels because we have that first header row included in there. We're going to throw it into a new worksheet. Uh, and that's all we need for now. So I just hit OK and boom, it works. Um, so what we've got here now is basically a summary output. And uh, what we can first see right away is that the R squared value is 0.789. Um, and as you remember from the previous episode, R is uh, your correlation. R squared is a measure of the variance included in the correlation. And what this is basically saying is that 78.9% of the variance when it comes to points scored by the home team, can it be explained by um, these six items, or these, I think, nine items here in the uh, box score information. And then down here, we have all the coefficients for all the various uh, items that we we took, and I believe it is nine, right? Yeah, nine nine different coefficients, and then we have the intercept. Um, so one thing to look at before we get too much further here is the p-value. Now, p-value is something that basically explains uh, how useful this data is. Uh, it's sort of like the the R coefficient as well. Uh, and what you want here is you want a very low number. And uh, data scientists normally reject any p-value that is not less than 0.05. Um, and we see looking at this list, it looks like there's two of them that, that are not less than 0.05. Uh, that's the three points attempted per game and the assists per game. Now, I'm not saying that sports betting is, is less of a science than, than normal data science, but I am saying, you know, it's it's not quite solving viruses, right? So um, I wouldn't worry too much about p-value, um, but you do probably want to rule out some things like a 0.25. Uh, and, and that's explainable too, because a, a team that is, is not scoring many points is probably going to chuck up more three-pointers, and that's going to create um, kind of a not very helpful correlation to how many points they're able to score if they're just getting desperate and throwing up shots they normally wouldn't throw up uh, because they're worth 50% more than a regular field goal. So I can see three points attempted could be a deceiving stat. Um, but overall, everything, everything else looks pretty good here. A lot of these are deeply negative. Um, and of course, that comes from the fact that if you were able to predict a lot of these, uh, you would have been able to predict the line, the the um, team score as well, because you know a lot of these are, are heavily correlated to the team score. So what does this all mean? Well, when I was in grade school or middle school or high school, I forget which, uh, we learned about linear regression, and there is a formula: y equals mx plus b. Uh, hopefully, that kind of triggers into some people's heads as well. And in this case. Uh, we can use y equals mx plus b to use that as a predictor. Now, we know y is home points, and that's what we want to predict. And b is our intercept value, uh, and that right here, 34.56855. And then the mx is basically all of the x coefficients, which are these nine items right here. Uh, and then each of them multiplied by their coefficient number, so, uh, you know, each of them multiplied by that number, add that all together, y equals mx plus b, and you have a prediction. So let's actually put this into practice because remember I said, let's take the first 960 rows that left 12 behind. Let's see how well it does predicting those 12 games based on the stats that we know uh, and, and see what happens. Okay, so what I've done now is I've taken the last 12 rows from our list of box scores from this current season, and I've uh, copied them here into this sheet, and I've taken away the amount of points that the home team has scored, and we're gonna actually just project that based on the other stats that we know for this game, and then we'll see how closely they match up. Okay, so remember the, the formula is y equals mx plus b. I'm just gonna type it down here just so you see it. And we can actually make it bigger. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to put this to practice. So 
we know that B is that intercept number, that 34. So we're just going to say that uh, that is B17. And we're going to add that to each of the coefficient multiples. So uh, the first one we're going to do is the three points made, which is uh, B18 multiplied by x, which is going to be over here in our uh, table, and that is 9. And you see that kind of adds together like that. And then we're going to add it, and you know what, just to keep these all separate. So b18 plus times 2. And we're going to just move down the line through all of these um, real quickly. Okay, and so through the magic of editing, we're entered it all in here and we're gonna go ahead and reveal it. So, given what it knows about everything in this game, all of these x coefficients, uh, and what it knows about the constant, the intercept, uh, it basically is projecting that there'll be 117 points scored by the indented pacers. I'm gonna go ahead, I've already filled this out for the rest of the 12 here, and let, go ahead and reveal those. Uh, and, you know, just to make it a little bit neater, we're going to uh, narrow this down into whole numbers. So, uh, there's the projections according to linear regression as to what the home, point te home team will score based on, uh, on everything it knows. So, how close was it to the actual? Well, I've got the actuals over in another column here. We're going to reveal that. And we'll see that in some cases it was very close, within a point or two. In other cases it was off by uh, seven or eight or more. Um, but, you know, that's, that's what kind of regression is. It's basically finding the uh, best fit uh, that'll, you know, be the minimal error on all of the uh, data points involved. Now, remember that we had two coefficients here that uh, the p-value said, eh, I would, you know, you probably don't need to use those. So what I did is over here in the next column is I uh, took all of our coefficients except for three points attempted and except for assists. And uh, I decided to do a projection based on the other values involved. And uh, that turned out to be uh, a little bit closer. Reveal here. So we'll see that, uh, you know, in some cases we got to be of a point closer to the actual total. Um, you know, so it made a, a minor improvement in the fit of the model. Uh, but basically, this is how linear regression can work for you. Uh, you can use it to uh, make a projection based on everything you know and, and the best line slope that it's already fit into that model, uh, and then uh, go with it from there. However, there is a second form of regression analysis, and that is logistic regression, which we're going to get into very shortly. But first, let's talk about that. Okay, as I've mentioned earlier, we've reached our limit with Excel as we move into logistic regression. Can you still use it? Yes. Would I recommend it? No. Are you done with Excel forever? Absolutely not. You're still going to find yourself in Excel frequently. After all, when it comes to manipulating data, Excel still, well, excels. By the time you reach logistic regression, a large part of the effort is in making your data pliable. Uh, that is, you need to make sure your data is correct and can be isolated enough to work with the tools that you'll be using. And Excel will probably still be the tool for you to do that with. Now, for logistic regression, personally I use R. However, I've tried to steer clear of syntax when doing this series, and R is largely syntax-based. A few months ago, I found out about Orange. Now, Orange is a data mining tool that originally was born out of being a Python library. It has evolved into a completely visual data science tool that basically allows you to whiteboard your way into data science. Orange is a product of Slovenia, so it doesn't quite have the widespread support that a lot of other products do. However, from what I've seen of it, 
it is very powerful. It can handle just about every facet of data science from visualization to classification. Uh, it can even handle the basics of machine learning. It may be a good tool for those of you who are looking to learn more about data science concepts without having to read a complex textbook to get there. Now, I will say though that it is still recommended that you migrate on to R or Python once you have these concepts in hand. Uh, doing this sort of thing in R or Python is not terribly hard once you know what you're doing and the support out there for R and Python in terms of learning uh, is, is vastly superior. So it's probably the best way to go. But that said, let's go into Orange. Okay, as I said, we're gonna be working in Orange. However, first, we need to stay in Excel just a little bit longer because we need to make our data pliable. Now, we have the uh, spreadsheet that we've been working through all the other episodes of this series, but first what we need to do is we need to take some of that spreadsheet and we need to add some columns because this is the answers to the questions we're gonna be asking ourselves in the logistic regression. Uh, the main thing we need to do is I added some columns here on the uh, the odds, which are the, which is the closing line for uh, all of the games uh, from this season, and that was taken from my own database. And then we have the total points scored in the game, which is of course just the combined away points and the home points. Uh, and then I have basically a binary function here: whether did the game go over or did the game go under? If it went over, then it's a one. If it went under, then it's a zero. And that's going to be important for our logistic regression. And then what I also did is I took the combined stats for uh, all of our other box score variables. The three points made, attempted, field goals made, attempted, offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, assists, turnovers, fouls. Uh, so that's all been combined and these are just the combination of the away three points attempted, and, or three points made, and the home three points made. Um, that's how these stats are all reached, uh, which you could probably tell just by going over them. Again, this spreadsheet will be available to you in the description of this video um, that you can download from Google Drive and work on all of this yourself. Now, that said, I then take uh, our database here and I'm gonna lop off uh, every game that happened in March. So March 1st through when this, this, the season uh, stopped, uh, March 11th. And basically I'm gonna take all the data that it happened before March 1st, and that's gonna be our training database. We're gonna train our model with that data. And then everything that happened March 1st and after, that's gonna become our test database. And we're gonna basically use the training data to project the over-unders on the games that were played in March without having actually seen the results. See how it works out. So uh, what I did is this is called uh, Logit Train and this goes all the way down to uh, February 29th and I saved that and then there's also one that I saved of just the March data and that is called Logit uh, Test. Now let's head into Orange. Okay, so here we are in Orange and one of the benefits that I haven't mentioned up till now about using Orange, and this is even a benefit over R or Python, is it can natively read Excel files. Uh, that's a big deal because a lot of times when I work in R, I basically have to go into Excel first, manipulate the data as I need to make it pliable, and then export it as a CSV file, and then import that CSV into R. Uh, Orange is able to kind of get around that whole step by basically natively reading an Excel file. So what I've got here is I've got the NBA train file and the NBA test file. And basically what we're gonna do is we're going to build a logistic regression and then use that logistic regression in order to predict the values in NBA test. Now I should point out that NBA test, uh, I mentioned is the all the March games. However, I have deleted what was the total points scored in the game uh, from, that, from that data set. So NBA test does not know uh, how many points were scored in the game. Uh, let's go ahead and what we're going to do first is we're going to select data from uh, each of these files and to do that it's it's pretty simple here we're going to go over into the data manipulation uh, folder here these are called widgets in orange and we're just going to drag this into the white space 
and then connect these two. And so now the data from NBA train is flowing through. And in here, we're going to select columns and data opened up in another monitor. But so what I can do here is I can just select the data that I want to take from this. So let's, uh, let's start simple. Let's start with um, field goals made. And down here, these are the combined um, totals. And we'll put that, they call it a feature, because that's a, their way of describing a variable. We're going to have a target variable. And in this case, it's the over-under. We're projecting whether the game goes over or under the total uh, based on the information that we have. So just based on the information of field goals made in the game, can we derive if the game will go over or under the total? Uh, so over under is the target variable. The meta attribute is basically just sort of like the primary key of the database. Um, and I created kind of a pseudo one I called a game ID. And it's basically just the date combined with the two teams that were playing in order to kind of create a primary key within that database, which is like a unique identifier in, in, the, in the data set. So that's all I need to do here. I'm just going to close that. And, uh, and then I need to bring in my logistic regression. Now there's two ways. You can also select from these menus on the left side, or you can just right click and begin to type what you are looking for. I just type L-O-G-I, there's logistic regression. And we'll just put it right here. And now we're just dragging it right into there. Uh, it's hard to do that without making kind of a uh, sound to it, but that's what it is. Um, so logistic regression in and of itself, it doesn't have any commands to follow. Uh, you can actually modify the different types of logistic regression you use, but there's nothing you really need to, to know about that at this point. Uh, what you're going to be doing, though, is you're going to want to see what the results of that logistic regression are. And to do that, there is a widget they call test and score. And you can see it there. It's in my, in my recent recently used. Um, but I'm just going to type test, and there it is. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag the data that we've selected and then also drag uh, what's called the learner from logistic regression to go into here. And now if we double click on that, we find that uh, basically this is telling us that field goals made is a very good predictor of uh, whether a game will go over or under to the point where it's actually 89.4% uh, is the area under the curve, which is a way that you'd kind of judge uh, the effectiveness of logistic regression. Uh, so this is actually a, a pretty good, you know, we could use that one variable, uh, but we don't have to use just that one variable because we can go back into select columns and we can bring over uh, three pointers made, we can bring over turnovers. Uh, basically, we can bring over these three and field goals attempted. I'm going to basically bring over everything except for uh, assists and for three pointers attempted because we had kind of verified in uh, linear regression that they kind of had a lower p value, so they're not as predictive. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring over these uh, seven items, seven variables go right back into test and score, and now that number is even higher, 92.1. Um, so right there, we see that this is an effective uh, projection, and you know we kind of knew that all along. Um, but let's have it project against the data, uh, the, the test data that we don't have the, um, the over-under scored for, with the totals of those games. So to do that, uh, we're going to do the same thing here with the test data, we're going to select columns from it. And we want to select the same ones that we have in the training data. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And uh, field goals attempted. You see its target variable is also the over under. And then we're going to use what is uh, adequately called the predictions widget. So now, before we add uh, what the other data we know into the predictions widget, we can just drag this across so I can show you uh, what it currently looks like. So currently in there is we have these games starting from March 1st uh, through to March 11th. And in the over under, which remember was a binary result, one being over, zero being under, it has a question mark. It has no data in those fields. Um, and the data it does know is turnovers, field goals made, personal fouls, 
three-pointers made, offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, field goals attempted. It doesn't know what the end score of the game was. It doesn't know what the line of the game was. Uh, this is the only information it knows. So we, we take that and we basically draw a line here from logistic regression over to the predictions. And you can disregard this X that pops up here. It's just basically saying that some of the information it got from logistic regression doesn't quite match up, um, but it's not a, a fatal error by any stretch. Now, when we go into the predictions tab, it has logistic regression has made a projection on all of these games. And uh, if we actually select both of these, we can see how strong the projection was. Uh, in some cases, it was like 100% projection. In other cases, it says uh, about 97% confident this way. Uh, this one's 57 to 43%. It's a little bit less confident based on the stats it knows on this game. But in the end result, we, it's giving us a zero or a one. Zero being an under, one being an over. Uh, so the question is, how does that information match up with the actual over or under for the game? Well, let's take a look at that. Okay, so how do we figure out how accurate this is? Well, uh, I've created a, another spreadsheet, and so we're going to go back into Excel. And basically, I've called this spreadsheet uh, Logit Answer Key, uh, because basically what I've done here is uh, I've taken the projections from that logistic regression that we just ran, and this has the actual uh, points that were scored in the game and what the closing line was. And so we're going to see how close it was to... Uh, actual. So uh, here's the projections of uh, zero being under, a one being over, and we're just going to go ahead and reveal the actuals and see how they line up. Now at first glance it looks like it was fairly accurate all the way down here, uh, but let's we can do a quick tabulation to see exactly how accurate it was. So what we'll do in the uh, next column over here is we'll do an if statement. If uh, AK2 equals AL2, uh, then say yes. Uh, otherwise, just leave it blank. And we'll copy that down. And you'll see there's a lot of Y's there. There's a lot of places where they did match up. And so what we can do is we can do a count if on that whole range there. Uh, AM range, uh, if it's equal to Y. And then we'll divide that number by the uh, total of uh, count A in AL2 uh, to uh, AL, I think it was uh, like around 70, it was about 80 actually. This comes up with 78.2%. So the, the model as we had it was 78.2% accurate in predicting whether the game would go over or under based on the stats it was fed. However, is that good? Well, let's head back over to um, orange here. And we can see that what we were expecting though is it to be closer to about an 85% precision. Um, so it's a, it came up with a little bit of a disappointing result. But in the overall scheme, you can see how uh, if you can load in the data and you can load in the variables that you feel will be predictive uh, and you're able to compare this with going over or under or any other binary result, uh, you can use logistic regression to come up with uh, that projection. So as I said, all of these spreadsheets will be available in the description of this video. Uh, I would encourage you to get in there, play around with them a little bit more, uh, find your own data, find something that you want to try to use uh, linear regression or logistic regression on, and then uh, get more familiar with the concepts. Uh, even if it's not something you can immediately bet on, uh, but something you might want to just answer a question you've always had in your head is how does this correlate and will this create a projection or a prediction that I could possibly use? Um, they're powerful tools and you'll use them as you go further on in becoming a modeler. So that about does it for now. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving it a thumbs up down below and also consider subscribing. I would appreciate that. All right, I will see you next time on Making a Modeler.